Ma'am, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, very good afternoon. Yes, yes. Good afternoon. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Good afternoon, all. On behalf of IoT Academy, I welcome you all for the fourth session of national level FTP on the art of research. Let me introduce the research person of today's session, Dr. Neha Seth. Dr. Neha Seth is working as assistant professor at School of Commerce and Management, Central University of Rajasthan. She is a PhD holder from the Department of Management Studies, Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee, and postdoctoral from Faculty of Management, University of Delhi. She has written numerous research papers for international and national journals of repute and presented a number of papers in international and national conferences. Two PhDs are awarded under her supervision. She has delivered lectures in various reputed institutions and organized number of events like national and international conferences. With this, I hand over the session to Dr. Neha Seth. Ma'am, please. Uh, thank you so much, dear. And I'm really Welcome. thankful to uh, IoT Academy and uh, all the dignitaries who are present here. And thank you, IoT Academy, for giving me a chance to be amongst uh, these people. And, uh, and many congratulations to IIT Academy for organizing this event at national level, which is Art of Research. And uh, today my topic is uh, near, uh, the art of writing dissertation. So I'd be beginning with the topic and uh, as told uh, by the organizer that we'll be keeping question answer sessions at the end. Okay, so first I'll go through the basics about this and then we can take all the sessions at the end. Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen for that. Okay. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, ma. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, so we'll be talking about dissertation and how we can you know write a very good dissertation, okay, to get our degrees awarded. So before starting, I would like to have uh, a few words from the participants that what do they, they understand when we are talking about dissertation? What do they understand uh, from the word dissertation? It would be really great if it is a, a monologue rather than a dialogue session. Okay, fine. I guess it's an afternoon time and most of us throughout India are suffering from extreme heat. So people are not enthusiastic or maybe ready enough to answer for now. But we will go ahead and in the meanwhile also, I'll uh, you know uh, try to uh, give some exercises or put some questions so that I can have some uh, you know monologue or some conversation with the participants as well. Okay, so coming straight to the topic that what do we actually mean by dissertation? So basically dissertation is a kind of document. Okay, it is presented in the form of book. It's, it's required in support of any academic degree or a professional certification that presents the author's research and results. So basically when an author and this author can be anyone. Nowadays we are doing dissertation work in master's degree also and in some colleges and some universities even bachelor students have to work on some uh, project work and post that they have to submit their dissertation. So basically what our uh, topic of the day or our theme of the day will be confined to the uh, PhD degree dissertation that that is also known as thesis for us. Okay, but we will take briefs about the master degree MPhil degree also that how we frame the dissertation for masters or MPhil degree or PhD degree. Okay, the size is different. The type of work that we do for different type of degree may be different, but the basic structure for all the dissertations will remain same. Okay, so basically it is a document which is required to be produced for any kind of degree that you want to get. Okay, be, be it master's degree, be it MPhil degree or be it doctoral degree. And even for postdoctoral also we write a dissertation, we write a project re report that we need to submit to the uh, affiliated organization. It is presented in the form of book which is submitted in support of our candidature for the professional qualification that we hold. Okay, so basically a thesis writing is regarded as one of the most important notion when it comes to explore, uh, expository writing. That means when we have to, uh, when we have intention to explain something or when we are trying to describe something, okay, then we have to write this kind of dissertation. Our focus will remain to thesis, 
okay and uh, for this very purpose there is a statement which emphasizes on the studies ideas it expresses some kind of argument or it or, or the views that uh, crystallized into a single sentence. So there is a problem statement that defines or around which our dissertation work actually revolves. Okay, before getting into the structure of what kind of structure that we need to follow for finalized dissertation, I would like to have a brief word about what a thesis statement or a problem statement is. Okay, so basically a thesis statement is one complete sentence that expresses researchers position. Okay, this is one sentence that defines the researcher's position, where the researcher is and where he or she want to reach, what kind of conclusion we are looking for from our research work that we are doing. Okay, it narrows down the topic down uh, to the specific focus of investigation, the type of investigation we are doing, our focus will remain on that particular topic. It establishes a direction for entire dissertation. When we mention the problem statement, it gives direction to our project, it gives direction to our dissertation. Okay, it put forward the point to conclusion, it helps us to reach to the conclusion. And it is always stated in the introduction chapter. Even when we are writing some research paper, our problem statement needs to be mentioned in the introduction chapter because it forms the base for any kind of academic writing work that we are doing, be, be it writing any kind of dissertation or writing any research paper. Okay. And it is all, it always take a stand and justify further discussion. It, uh, the statement should, should be such that it opens further discussion. Okay. So a thesis statement is not the statement of fact. So we are not describing any kind of fact we are, when we are talking about thesis statement. Rather, uh, 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 there are a few examples that uh, we have quoted here. The thesis statement should be something that is arguable. Okay, so there are two examples mentioned here. In first one, we can say there is a thesis uh, statement of fact is given, which says that there are some negative and positive aspect of banana herb tea supplement so people those who are consuming banana herb tea supplement there may be some positive or there may be some negative aspect of that so this is a statement of fact but this cannot be presented in your dissertation as statement uh, as a problem statement but it should be an arguable thesis statement or arguable pro uh, problem statement rather the same thing can be presented in this manner like because banana herb tea supplement promotes rapid weight loss that results in loss of muscle and lean body mass. It possess a potential danger to consumer. Now the researcher will focus on this and he will do research or he will work on this or start investigating in this line to reach to some conclusion whether this kind of supplement affects the body and if it is affecting, whether they are affecting positively or affecting negatively, what kind of effects it is given to uh, the body of the person who is consuming these kind of herbs. Okay, then there is one more example, which says that foul language is common in movies. Okay, this is a statement of fact. We cannot present this statement of fact again in our thesis. Rather, we should put it in this way, that the amount of foul language in the movie is disapproportionate. Now, to the amount of foul language in the real life. Now, this will open the argument. This will lead to some kind of discussion. This will lead to some kind of investigation that researcher will do to reach to certain conclusion. So, our statement uh, of problem should be presented in such a manner. So there is a rule that we need to follow when we are, you know, um, formulating our uh, problem statement. So, a strong uh, thesis, I can say, is uh, something that answers how and why type of questions from our topic okay why we are doing this how we are going to do this okay so these kind of questions we are trying to find out answers to these questions and for that very purpose we need to formulate a problem statement so a weak problem statement can be uh, can be seen in the first part of this uh, um, table which is given here which is uh, represented uh, the statement is the economic situation is very bad it is a very generalized situation which may be applicable to any economy okay so it includes three parts which has a broad noun or we can say a common noun thing okay then it has a very weak verb and because this is just is is mentioning we are not mentioning the proper verb here as well then it is a vague kind of adjective which is used a bad okay 
then uh, there is another way or rather i can say a better way of presenting the same statement following this broad formula wherein the noun can be replaced from a common noun it should be replaced to proper noun or i can say a specific noun weak verb can be represented by a proper action verb and a vague adjective can be um, replaced by assertive uh, predictive uh, adjective okay so this statement can be reformulated in this way the tax policies of the current administration so you are now clarifying here that what the noun is what is going to affect what the verb is threatened to reduce the tax burden on the middle class so this is what they are going to do uh, these kind of policies are going to how it going to affect by sacrificing education and healthcare programs for anyone so how it is going to uh, affected how this adjective is replaced by particular uh, activity which is going to affect the middle income people so this is how we can improve our thesis statement to have a complete idea of what a thesis is going to be about and this is something very interesting that uh, um, the the reader would look into these kind of statement and this will create interest for the reader also and um, the reader will able to read it or will be able to connect it uh, to your thesis only when this statement of problem is very clear to the reader so it is something very important when when we come to a thesis writing okay now coming to the uh, standard format that we follow again there are different ordinances for different kind of universities every university has its own kind of ordinance for thesis or dissertation writing okay we need to stick to those ordinances when it comes to the writing but still there is a standard way which is generally followed by uh, i can say um, mostly all the universities which are there in india okay so we'll be discussing this standard format here okay so uh, coming to uh, the very basic things or we can say the very initial things here so we will start with these initial pages which says that when we uh, start with our dissertation we have that title page the very first page or we can say the cover page of that uh, dissertation is there with us because it is something gives the first impression to the person who is going to pick your book or pick your thesis in his or her hands okay so that first page or that cover page should include the title of dissertation it should also include your name your department the degree for which you are going to submit that dissertation it may be your pg degree it may be your mphil degree it may be your uh, phd degree the name of the institution and date of submission it could not it may not be the specific date of submission but at least the month and year can be mentioned like like our students are going to submit their report in the month of may so they will write may 2022 uh, in the report at the end i am going to show you certain samples also Uh, to give clarity on oh, what we are discussing here okay going further uh, this cover page or i can say the title page may or may not include the student id number sometimes again it is mentioned in the ordinance that student need to mention their id number also or the roll number or enrollment id whatever given by the university it may um, it may be skipped also depending upon the ordinance the name of the supervisor should also be mentioned and sometimes the logo of university will also come okay so this is uh, it depends on the different policies uh, which are being framed by the university to university okay sometimes these structures may differ uh, for different countries also okay some countries follow different kind of structure i i will tell you once i will move ahead with this okay once you are done with your cover page or the title page when it is clear the next thing is acknowledgement so when you open your thesis the first page after your this cover page or the title page you will see the uh, acknowledgement pages are there where wherein the authors need need to acknowledge or he should actually acknowledge or basically it is the way through which he or she can give respect to all these people who helped him or her in finishing his or her dissertation work okay and he may uh, put the name uh, with a gratitude uh, towards his or her supervisor who ever guided him maybe the research participants family friends there are other teachers in the department or maybe uh, the library staff maybe other staff helping hands who are there so whosoever in any form okay supported you in your dissertation it's it's good to write their name because it shows uh, your thankfulness to them okay and once this acknowledgement thing is done the next thing is 
abstract what the abstract is abstract is is, is a basically we can say is a short form of your thesis is the crux of your thesis okay again it depends on the university's ordinance sometimes uh, the word limit is given in the ordinance sometimes the word limit is not given in some universities the word limit is maybe 300 to 500 word for some university it may extend it to 1000 word now it depends upon your department or university whatever rules are framed by the university in this sense but uh, uh, the abstract should be you know very thoughtful thing okay it is uh, it should be really ideal because whenever read, a reader opens up to any thesis or uh, uh, any dissertation this abstract is something uh, which creates the interest of the reader in reading the, um, you know, this, your thesis or dissertation. Even when we read any kind of uh, um, fiction book or any kind of work, book that we want to, um, you know, read or we, after reading the title, if we create our interest, we look for the preface, which shows that what actually is going to be there in that uh, particular book. Okay, it is like a trailer of a movie. Okay, so it has to be really, really interesting. It has to have those small scenes which creates the interest of audience. Okay, so abstract is like that trailer to us for that movie. So it has to be really, very interesting. Okay, so when we are uh, talking about abstract, what basic things we need to include in the abstract? We can include uh, very, maybe two, three lines of introduction of your topic, uh, for, uh, followed by the aim or the objective of your thesis. And after that, you can uh, describe uh, your uh, data that you have collected, the data for fulfilling that objective, the tools that you have used for the purpose of analysis, the summary or basic conclusion, and uh, the discussion if required. Okay, again, uh, whatever fit into um, the ordinance, okay, according to that, you can frame your abstract, but it has to be really short and sweet. Okay. But it uh, it, ha it ha has to be really, really crisp. Okay. Then we have table of content or we also call it index. So basically we require to arrange this table of content very, very carefully because it lists all our chapters, its subheadings and the respective page numbers. So again, it will take the, uh, the reader to where he or she actually wants to be. So if he or she is interesting in one particular type of chapter or maybe one particular type of heading, this person can automatically reach to that particular page only by seeing the index. He can point out that page, he can read, uh, reach to that page. But now what if you have mentioned these pages, page numbers wrong? So it will, you know, uh, spoil all the fun of reading it in the very beginning. So again, it is very thoughtful thing that we need to do. Followed by abbreviations abbreviation list or list of abbreviation i can say so there are number variety of work that we are doing and uh, nowadays it is a kind of fashion that we are not using detail you know or the expanded form of words we are in habit also and uh, just to save the space could be one of the reasons space time is also saving time is also one of the reason why we are using abbreviations in our um, this academic writing projects okay so but when a layman is using or uh, reading your thesis or your dissertation, sometimes it may not be possible to understand what, what does uh, this any abbreviation or uh, whatever you have given, he or she is not able to understand. Just for understanding of these layman or any person who is new to your area or maybe interested in reading your research, it is better to put this list of abbreviation there. And it has to be listed in, uh, in alphabetical order. Because again, it will make it easier for the person to point out or to reach wherever he or she want to reach. Okay. Then uh, it should be followed by the glossary. It again depends on the ordinance, whether you need to include it or not. Like in our university, we don't include glossary. Okay. But I have seen certain uh, um, dissertation or thesis is when then the, where this list of glossary is also there. So list of glossary means uh, the basic definitions. As I mentioned in the case of abbreviation, sometimes there are new words or new things which are not, you know, understood by the layman people. So for them, we put them in the list of abbreviations. Similarly, there are few um, uh, words or I can say some specific words which are related to one particular uh, subject area, which may be not understood by people from other subject area. So for their understanding, we can give these kind of basic definitions in the list of glossary in the very beginning. 
okay so that they can refer to um, this list of glossary okay so a glossary is basically a list of terms that are arranged in alphabetical order and uh, it explains each term in very uh, brief uh, definition of description i can say so this is how i can uh, we can frame our very uh, beginning pages or initial pages of any um, thesis okay now uh, till now we have covered the initial pages now coming to the chapter so when we are starting with our thesis so the very first thing that uh, we have is introduction chapter so how we are going to frame our introduction okay so basically again introduction is something opening of anything okay so uh, our introduction chapter should have this topic of research okay it should establish this topic of research very clearly it should uh, provide the essential background information very effectively in order to conceptualize the work so this will give the framework for rest of the thesis okay now we need to narrow down the focus as well as defining the scope of research in this chapter of introduction so as a researcher also it is not possible for me to research, do research on every possible aspect like my area of specialization is stock market or i can say financial markets okay so it is not possible for me to get it done or get or study all the possible aspects related to stock market in one particular thesis or one particular project okay so the scope of that particular thesis or project will be limited okay one thesis or one project will be limited so i will define the scope of my research in the very beginning chapter that is my introduction chapter it will also show the state of existing research what you are doing and till now before you started your work what kind of work is already existing okay this was done till now this is what you are going to define in introduction chapter so it will form the motivation of your work okay why you are motivated to do work on that particular topic okay this will this this particular heading will define that okay it will lead to the relevance of work what is the importance of work why are you doing this work okay who are who are going to use your work in future okay what is the purpose of uh, uh, your research work that we uh, you are doing so okay, this all things should be mentioned in the chapter of introduction then research questions and objectives again sometimes Mm, supervisors asked to put these research objective questions and hypotheses in research methodology chapter but it is also possible that we can put these kind of things our research questions and objectives in very beginning also and uh, we can include this in introduction chapter as well right and this introduction chapter will end with the overview of dissertation structure which which is also known as chapterization of our thesis okay like what will chapter 1 include what will chapter 2 include 3 4 5 and so on okay so number of chapters that you will include and how they, these chapter will be categorized so it will give the overview of your complete dissertation structure so this is this will form our first chapter the chapter of introduction okay the chapter of introduction will be followed and sometimes people will divide this introduction into two parts also wherein uh, they may give the general introduction and then in second chapter they will introduce specifically their area and uh, as far as my preference is con concerned i prefer to have one small introduction chapter okay and moreover people have tendency to start their work with introduction chapter and again as per my understanding uh, is concerned or what i am guiding to my students i always suggest them to write introduction chapter in the end okay because it will include the story that your dissertation is going to produce so how will you frame your introduction chapter when you don't know what is going to happen in um, the uh, further chapters okay so i would rather ask them to do the literature review first which will be followed by research methodology analysis conclusion after their this uh, frame of their thesis is done then they will write the introduction chapter in order to give a complete view of their dissertation okay so the second step after uh, writing your introduction chapter the second step that is generally followed is a uh, review of literature or we can say uh, literature review okay basically it includes all uh, or i can say the majority of paper which might be related it, it it could be articles it may be blogs it may be 
you know some uh, um, uh, news uh, newspaper articles it may be from some magazines or from books also so you need for you need to gather all the possible sources of giving you the information related to your topic so once you have that universe of your uh, the data which is related to literature review here you can <clears throat> you need to you know find out those specific things okay or those specific articles which are directly related to your topic okay or uh, related to the topic on which you want to pursue your research okay so once you have gathered the data you need to critically analyze and interpret each source from where have you received the data and you have to segregate maybe you have collected thousands of paper but these thousands of paper would not be related to your work okay so you have to cut down all the clutter and you have to reach to or you have to find those 150 to 200 papers that would be specific to your uh, phd research work in order to draw uh, the conclusion out of these uh, set of articles that you are doing uh, you are having so this is done to draw the point of connection between them you have to find now we have shortlisted these 150 papers we are just this is just a zoom figure again uh, once we have shortlisted these 150 papers we will try to find we have to connect the dots in these papers how these researches may be connected to each other something may be lagging in one paper or something may be lagging in another paper as i mentioned there is a scope of any research so one research cannot cover any everything so there must be some gaps there there must be some conflicts there okay we have to look for those gaps okay and this literature review is done for the purpose of assessing the gap in concerned literature we have to reach to that gap to uh, start our uh, uh, the uh, research work okay so we have to find out that gap in literature which is still existing we have to work on that gap okay now based on these gaps okay our objectives will form the objectives of our research will form okay once we are done with the objectives we will formulate the research questions okay now the questions will arise okay now to answer these questions uh, sorry 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 I mean, uh, after this gap certain research questions will arise and from these research questions you will find your research objectives and just to fulfill this research objectives you will formulate certain assumptions that are known as hypothesis okay and now to answer these or to um, fulfill these assumptions we will reach to our next uh, chapter that is research methodology chapter in which we will define the data that is required to fulfill our objective the tools that we are going to use for our research okay all these things will be defined in our research methodology chapter so the overall type and approach of research will be mentioned in this particular chapter like what kind of research you are doing whether it is a quantitative research a qualitative one means maybe it is just a conceptual re research or maybe an empirical study or it is an ethnographic study or it is an empirical research so what kind of research you are doing it has to be mentioned there in research methodology chapter the me method of data collection how you have collected your data maybe you have used different kind of surveys or maybe interviews maybe you have used archives <clears throat> or whatever source of your data is and what kind of data you are collecting you have to mention here in research methodology chapter then the elaborative details of when where and with whom the ground research took place say you have collected the primary data so what were the regions from where you have collected the primary data who are your respondents what were the time when you have collected the data all these things need to be mentioned in your research methodology chapter because these are these are very important things which are going to affect your uh, this the results at the end basically research methodology chapter we can say is a backbone of any thesis because it actually gives shapes to your research okay so it also include the methods of analyzing the data what kind of methods you are using maybe you are using some kind of statistical analysis maybe some t test z test anova whatever test you are, might be applying maybe you are using some kind of econometric tools okay sometimes um, maybe um, some other maybe some experiment that you are doing for your for uh, analyzing your uh, data that you have collected so you need to again mention all these things in your research methodology chapter okay what kind of tools you have employed material or tools that you have employed 
okay what kind of if you are doing some experimental work what lab equipments you have used if you are doing some maybe um, you know empirical work what kind of computer programs that you may be using like i'm presuming that most of us are from social science background so we all know or might have used spss in our research okay or uh, might be some of you uh, have used e views also for your research so what kind of programs or what kind of softwares we are using for the purpose of our analysis and ultimately we have to give the justification or evaluation of the methods that we will be using so it cannot be the selection of methods that we are doing cannot be random the answer has to come from the literature we have done our literature review the gap is extracted from them uh, and the objectives uh, are also extracted from literature review so are the requirement of our data and requirement of our tools that we need to use for the purpose of analysis so all these things need to be mentioned in the research methodology chapter so once you are through with your research methodology chapter the next thing that we need to cover up is the results okay sometimes again there are two chapters that are combined by uh, different people or uh, depending upon supervisor also sometimes we combine uh, results and uh, interpretation in the same chapter sometimes we bifurcate them in one chapter we present the result and in another chapter we give interpretations so when we here we are talking about results first and for, it will be followed by how we are going to give interpretation so when we are talking about results it concisely state every relevant outcome including to the relevance of descriptive statistics as well as in inferior uh, statistics like uh, you have to give the basic results also which includes standard deviation mean median maximum value minimum value jacques barre test skewness kurtosis so these are very basic things i think this has to be this kind of uh, you know test which we call descriptive statistics it has to be done by every possible whether you are using spss or you uh, e views whatever kind of data you are using whether you are using time series or any other kind of data you need to do this kind of test okay or uh, if we are doing any or performing any specific test also like maybe uh, yeah t test z test as i mentioned one way anova two way anova by parent test or maybe co integration test or whatever test you are applying so uh, there are specific values that we need for the purpose of uh, uh, interpretation going forward we need to present all these things in our results chapter then we briefly state the meaning of these values okay we all know um, we check p values for acceptance or rejection of any kind of hypothesis okay so what does that p value mean for that particular test okay what is the uh, you know uh, i can say interpretation interpretation is not the right thing rather i can say what is the value that you are getting and if this value is what we have received what could be the what are the results okay or i can say we we can uh, put the real findings of our questions here okay what was our proposed hypothesis what is the null hypothesis for that particular test and what is the alternate hypothesis when you got this p value whether you are accepting the null hypothesis or accepting the alternate hypothesis okay so all these things are interconnected when we are talking about results so when we have presented it we have to give a brief finding related to that as well we sometimes need to mention our tables in the same chapter and sometimes our tables are so detailed okay if anybody of you have used co integration model uh, you might have seen uh, sometimes or maybe uh, if anybody of you have used causality model for um, very big data set you might have seen that it, it will give you a, a very huge table very huge table so it is sometimes not possible to include that table in the results okay so what we will do we put such tables which are extremely lengthy into appendices i'll come to uh, that portion as well we will put the uh, or take this table at the end of our dissertation rather we will put a concise form of results here in this chapter okay so whatever figures or uh, tables which are uh, required for the understanding of the reader should be included in this chapter then uh, reporting all the results that are pertinent to research questions so we should not miss anything which is related to or lead to answers of our research questions and 
last but not the least we should never include any subjective speculation or interpretation when it comes to results because here we are only presenting results we are not giving any interpretation interpretation can be given in the next chapter okay and there are three things that need to be kept in mind when it comes to interpretation sometimes uh, it will be given in any uh, thesis or if you will see some sample thesis with the name of discussion as i mentioned in the beginning there are different formats may be used in different countries so sometime in some countries discussion uh, is something they are putting first and then they are giving the results and uh, uh, then they are giving the conclusion sometimes uh, they put conclusion first first and after that they give their discussion so it depends on the kind of format that your supervisor is suggesting or uh, or your university is following and according to that you can um, you know place uh, the, the the common titles that we are discussing so these three things are like uh, whether our discussion or results whether it is providing uh, our interpretation correctly or not what do the concerned results mean so we have presented our results in the previous chapter now what does that results mean we have mentioned that we according to p value we have accepted the hypothesis now accepting hypothesis means what okay this will be shown in uh, this chapter the chapter of interpretation okay now exploring the implication now why the concerned result really matter okay why do we need to if accepted or rejected what does that mean now why these results are important to us this also needs to be mentioned here because here we are giving interpretation of our our results we will relate these results with our objective with our research questions here and then we have to acknowledge the li limitations also here that means what are uh, what is that derived results cannot tell us okay once you got the result it may be possible that you will reach to answer of your research question perfectly and sometimes you may not reach to the right answer okay or you might not get the proper answer of your research question so what is lagging behind what is uh, left in this case can also be mentioned in this particular chapter here now coming to the last chapter that is conclusion and again sometimes it is uh, this chapter can be written as uh, summary conclusion and future scope sometimes it is only conclusion sometimes it's summary and conclusion okay sometimes it is conclusion and future scope so now again it depends on your uh, supervisor and your university's ordinance how you have to present this chapter okay so when we are talking about conclusion so conclusion is to be concisely answer the key research questions so the research questions that we have presented maybe in introduction or research methodology chapter should be clearly mentioned in the conclusion chapter and the proper answers from the interpretation and results chapter should be mentioned here this form of conclusions sometime also incorporates a recommendation for future practice now since we have got answer to our research questions so there is there were some limitations in every research so our uh, our research would also have some kind of limitations maybe the scope doesn't cover it so far so here in uh, future scope we can mention what is not covered so far and this may be covered in future studies okay so this particular segment this particular chapter that is conclusion it is significant to leave the reader with crystal clear impression of why the research matters so by this chapter it should be very much clear to the reader that why this research was conducted and what are the results of this research and how this research could be useful to the society okay to uh, our uh, um, you know the stakeholders of that particular research so what are what as a researcher we have contributed to what has been already known so what was already existing and what additional uh, you know knowledge uh, that is being imparted by our research work should also be mentioned in this particular chapter now coming to the end once uh, uh, you are done with your conclusion chapter these chapters are finished by now okay and uh, once you are done with this the next thing is Uh, there are again like we have those initial pages we have some ending pages also so the first one is uh, in the ending pages is reference list okay or we can say the list of references in some thesis it may also be given with the name of bibliography okay so this is how we can uh, uh, we should present our uh, you know list of references it includes whatever papers articles titles or whatever source from which we uh, which we got connected during our research work 
okay should be mentioned here in this list okay and it has to be presented in a particular style that we call a citation style okay uh, there is a particular style again that must be this must be mentioned in your uh, university's um, rule book or ordinance that what kind of style your university is following and it has to be common throughout throughout the thesis has to be very uh, similar it cannot be possible that in one page or one chapter you are using one kind of styling and in another another you may be using different kind of styling so you must heard of this apa style of referencing harvard style of referencing chicago i triple e these kind of referencing styles are available uh, we have to choose the referencing style according to our university's ordinance and it has to be same for uh, the complete thesis okay then uh, appendices okay appendices includes all those things which uh, which are important to our research work but for any reason maybe because of length maybe because of its relevance is somehow not included uh, in the chapters okay so we need to include these in the end as additional information so whosoever want to refer to this information can go to appendices and can refer to this so because of length majorly because of length we don't put it there okay it may include your questionnaire that you might have used for collecting the data your uh, interview transcript or some tables which may which might not be as i just now mentioned and even for literature review i ask my students to frame a table to make a table which is not possible to include in the chapter so they include these kind of tables at the end in appendices okay and once you are done with everything your thesis is kind of over because this is the last thing apart from this one more thing that you may include after appendices that is list of publication that came out out of this thesis again when the thesis goes to the examiner and most of your chapters are published in the form of research papers so it would be easier to you know uh, examiner also to get your work authenticated because you, he he or she knows that your work is kind of already checked okay already verified so there is least or no scope of any discrepancy so it is good to include the list of publications that arouse out of these uh, this research work that you have done and last but most important thing okay we need to get our thesis completely edited and proofread before submitting it should be free of any kind of error be it typo error be it uh, uh, error of spellings be it uh, grammatical error or try to avoid you know those long sentences in the thesis or try to have very concise and small you know sentences when it comes to uh, the thesis work okay so <clears throat> coming to the crystal clear do's and don'ts of thesis writing so when we are talking about don'ts of thesis writing that we should not do when we are writing a thesis the don'ts don't used first person pronoun so i am doing this we are doing this me us my our these kind of words should be avoided when we are writing a thesis so the thesis work should be written in a third person form okay you me these kind of words should not be included in the thesis then don't use um archaic terms archaic terms like thus alas these kind these are not terms utilized in common english so try to avoid these kind of terms in your dissertation do not use slangs okay so it is very common when we are talking when we are speaking we frequently use different type of slangs okay short forms like uh, omg for oh my god so these kind of slangs we generally use but i don't know okay i got to go so these are the slangs but it is okay when we are you know uh, talking informally but when it comes to formal writings especially formal academic writing uh it should not be included because it is a formal writing it's not the casual writing that we are doing we are not texting any uh, this to uh, our friend okay this has this dissertation has to be presented to someone who is going to evaluate on uh, the basis of this dissertation so these slangs should be avoided then we should not use any kind of glitches glitches means um, those phases 
which may have uh, you know like different meaning for different people or it's difficult for people to understand the correct meaning for uh, that particular you know um, sentence i can say like all that glitters is not gold okay it may have this this term itself have different meaning for different people all for one and one for all okay read between the lines these kind of things may have different meaning for different people we should avoid these kind of glitches in our dissertation work then we should not use qualifiers like really very surely often hopefully basically etc we should avoid using these words as well then avoid overuse scholarly phases like in this paper paper i will in conclusion at the end avoid these kind of you know scholarly phases in the end then when it comes to do's in thesis writing what we need to take care of okay uh, we need we should write in a clear plain style we should avoid the flowery language at at every possible cost okay it is it if necessary throw your thesaurus throw your dictionaries throw your you know those grammarly things for now R write what is coming from inside what you know okay and whenever required you can get it edited or proofread later just to avoid uh, any kind of you know mistakes that might be there but write clear or plain language okay always use active voice in writing then uh, vary your sentence structure again i mentioned this earlier also that we should avoid using extended or very large sentences because it may lead to confusion in mind of readers as well so as much as possible try to have those short concise small sentences okay instead of putting very lengthy sentences then uh, the tenses that we are using in our thesis it should be consistent like present tense is most common in academic papers or dissertations or any academic writing future tenses it should be completely completely avoided i'm sorry it should be completely avoided okay and uh, there is an exception that yes we can use past tense but past tense is generally used in uh, dissertations which belongs to um, which has historical information or maybe when you are mentioning something uh, or some information that might have collected from the pa uh, in past okay the experiment that were done in past so there only you can use this past tenses and um, have someone to read your dissertation before you finally going to submit it okay so these were do's and don'ts about the thesis okay so here i open the forum for questions and uh, uh, before this i would like to show you some sample thesis and some papers that were uh, that arose after uh, uh, from the thesis work that was done by my students okay just wait a minute Okay. Please confirm you are able to see this uh, thesis. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, see, this was a thesis which was submitted by one of my students. You can see that uh, we have mentioned in the beginning the title page is there. Okay. This is a thesis submitted for degree's name is there. In which department he has submitted the name of the candidate. Here he need not to mention it's his uh, enrollment ID here. The university logo is there, name of the department, university, and the date where he has submitted the thesis. So it was submitted almost four years ago. Then the declaration from the student that he, it is his sole work and this work has not been submitted to any other university for any kind of publication or for any uh, award of any other degree. Uh, he is going to give the declaration which has to be authenticated by the supervisor. Acknowledgements. So he has given all his thanks to from whosoever he remained connected during his PhD work. Then the abstract of the thesis. Okay, so you can see in this one page, he has given the complete abstract, the introduction, the data, the time period, the names of test, which are mentioned here, the results. Okay, and uh, the brief about or uh, uh, the conclusion of the thesis. Okay. Then the table of content, it includes the index. Again, the beginning pages are there, the chapters, subheadings with the page numbers. Okay. 
and at the end references appendices publications and conferences that was there because of or out of this uh, um, thesis okay then list of tables okay list of tables is there okay with page number the table number is also mentioned the title of the page, uh, table is mentioned and page number is also given so this is the these are the list of tables which are included in the thesis okay then the list of figures so wheresoever on whatever page he has included the figure the number of the figure title and page number the abbreviations okay so whatever abbreviations he has used during or in this thesis he has mentioned this now the chapter so first chapter shows the introduction okay so he has given since he worked on this stock market work so he has mentioned the overview of it whatever markets have been used in this the basic introduction of the concept uh, on the basis of which he is going to analyze the data motivation of this study scope of this study originality of the study okay and thesis structure uh, i have mentioned in the beginning that the chapterization is given in introduction chapter so what all chapters are there in this thesis and the brief about these chapters are mentioned here conclusion of the chapter second chapter which talks about literature review okay he has given a review from various aspects i'll show you one paper also in the end based on this particular chapter so i'm just jumping to literature review chapter instead of see how he has presented the review it's not completely theory okay these are presented with the help of some figures okay it is known as systematic literature review and it would be easier and rather eye catching for a uh, um, uh, this uh, reader also to you know go through the literature okay see he has used different tables and different ways through how he has presented this in the form of chapter okay then from where he has collected the data he has categorized all the tables year wise okay then country wise and you can see that sample period on the basis of sample period on the basis of time period then number of studies on various crises he studied the financial crisis then you can see the type of studies which are included okay and uh, then different markets which are covered like type of papers he has collected like 86% paper he has collected from the journals then 7% were the working papers okay 2% uh, were conference papers and others like articles etc whatever he has collected so in all he has collected 170 paper to be presented in this literature review chapter okay and he concluded this chapter next is research methodology chapter again a con conceptual framework to introduce the concept research questions so broadly he has two objectives based on which the two research questions were framed okay and uh, then he has five sub objectives to fulfill this one uh, or to answer this one research questions so these are the objectives and based on which we have hypothesis this is our sample design which defines our data the sources of data okay these are the markets which he has covered and the codes uh, which we are going to use or which he used in further study okay we cannot put all these names or we cannot repeat all these names every time maybe to represent south africa it is not possible to write the wool all share index every time so this is the code that we have given to this and this is used uh, further in this research okay then these are the tests that he has used for the purpose of analysis okay so he has justified all the tests which are used for this study here he has defined and justified every test why he is using this particular test for uh, analyzing the data right and uh, here is the conclusion of this chapter then fourth chapter which shows analysis and interpretation as i mentioned it can be you know segregated into two parts as well but we have clubbed this chapter and uh, these are this is how he has presented his tables and given the uh, explanation of these tables okay so i'm just quickly skipping this because i don't know for how many of you this is relevant so the purpose is just to show the structure okay so basically this is our results and interpretations and coming to the final chapter that is conclusion this is the most important one like summary conclusion and suggestions this is summary of thesis what he has done summarized everything okay you can see this is lengthier from the abstract 
as compared to abstract. These are the main findings. Okay, now answers to the research questions. This was our this was our research question. A clear answer to the research question. Okay, then this was the sub question. A clear answer to this research question. Okay, C. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and in the end, this was our hypothesis. Two hypotheses were framed, and a clear answer to this that yes, our uh, null hypothesis is accepted, or our alternate hypothesis is accepted. It is also clearly mentioned here. This was our second research question, a clear answer to this research question. This was our hypothesis and uh, it is again accepted. So it is clearly mentioned here. Possible implications of the study, limitations and based on this, the future scope of research is there. References, okay, which is your bibliography in the end. Appendices. So these are the things which were find out, which was the result of literature. But again, it was, I cannot say that it was irrelevant, but uh, our chapter worked without it. But it is just the additional information, just in case examiner want to go through the detailed information. So this was the table that was framed to draw those uh, figures that were used in literature review chapter. That is why uh, it is mentioned here. Okay, these are the list of publications which were framed out of this thesis. So these were the three, four papers, I think four papers which were public, published out of this thesis and three papers were proposed to be published out of this thesis. Okay, at that time in 2018. Okay, and these are the list of conferences that this student of mine has attended and that is all. So this is the complete thesis that he worked on. Okay. So the forum is open for question answer session. If you have any question, you may ask. And if you want to see my literature review uh, paper, I can also share that. The session is open for discussion now. You can post your questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and directly interact with the resource person. OK. So any of you want to see how this uh, chapter was published, this literature review chapter was published? Madam. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much for the feedback. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Shall we wind up, ma'am? Uh, yeah, fine. If you don't have any question, okay. Uh, somebody, Shilpi Kulshestra, want to see that how chapter is published. So I can take another one or two minutes to see. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sure okay, just give me a minute. Okay. Okay, so this is a literature review chapter. See, financial market contagion, selective rev review of reviews. Okay, so again, the different papers are collected. So abstract shows that how many papers were collected. There were 104 research papers which were considered as a sample for this paper. And it is again segregated on various basis. Importance of the study that we have mentioned, we have different objectives. The purpose of this literature review paper is to synthesize the existing literature on financial market contagion, arrange the publication in orderly manner to enable quick and easy search. Okay, and it gives a kind of, you know, um, one stop uh, uh, thing to the, um, the researcher in that particular area, if you have compiled this kind of information to someone. Okay, then classifying the research article according to various approaches and methodologies adopted and exploring the issues in the same area to suggest the research agenda for future work. Okay, so these are the methodologies that are used. Again, the data is classified on various basis and on every basis we are further making one table or maybe one figure and explaining that how the data actually looks. Now that here the data are research papers. 
we so far were using research papers only for literature review but here we have reused the research papers for the purpose of analysis so this is a kind of conceptual work which is rather difficult to get published okay so these were the sources from which where the papers were collected lit literature collection when i talk about so analyzing on the basis of various methodology so these were the tests which were used in different papers okay and this is how it is presented with the help of this diagram then uh, uh, it shows the year by classification so 104 papers so the first or the oldest paper in my collection was published in year 96 and the latest paper was collected in year 2016 okay and when we have analyzed the data on the basis of country so we have categorized the papers on the basis of authors like uh, the country from where the first author was okay we have taken the basis of that paper or the origin of that paper from that country okay and this is how we have categorized these papers according to the country so we'll get to know from this that uh, from which country we had like from us we had the maximum papers from australia uh, which is followed by australia germany and so on and so forth india lies somewhere on 11th number because out of this 104 paper which were there were number of paper collected but there were 104 which are exactly related to the topic that on which we wanted to work so out of these exactly matched paper there were three papers which were from india okay and when we uh, year wise i have already explained country wise then sample data so some some samples have used less than one year of data but at the same time there are papers who have used 30 to 35 years of data so based on which again the studies are uh, categorized and presented with the help of this diagram okay okay and now the sources the journals from which the these papers are collected these are the name of the journals okay so 20 papers are working papers and others while 84 papers are collected only from the journals so these were the sources of the data and findings from the review okay these are the findings ultimately what were your conclusion what we reached to okay like what is the widely used methodology or um, which studies have used what kind of data or the perfect length of data that may be used for the purpose of analysis okay what are the tools that are being used you know um, by various kind of researcher which is most widely used tool for this kind of analysis everything we will get in uh, the answer we will get from the literature so whenever we stuck in any kind of research the answer that we will get is only from literature okay conclusion and future scope and practical implication of this kind of study so this is how this paper was published long time back i guess in 2018 or 17 this paper was published okay uh, currently we are working on bibliometric analysis okay so this is something uh, i can say is the latest tool for literature review purpose so those who are interested can get in touch with me later also thank you any more questions again bibliometric analysis is out of scope of today's lecture <laughs> so those who are interested can contact me personally thank you shall we wind up now sure thank you Okay. On behalf of IIT Academy, I thank Dr. Neha, ma'am. It was a very wonderful and informative and detailed session, ma'am, on the art of writing dissertation. And I thank all the participants for joining the session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you all. All the best uh, to everyone and uh, have a great and pleasant evening. Thank you, dear. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all. Kindly submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box.